Electric cars, who'd have them? They're not really that good for the environment. The toxic batteries are ruinous for the planet and bad for the people mining them. We'll overload the national grid if we all plug in our EVs at the same time. Besides, there's not enough public charging points anyway, and we can't actually go anywhere in them because the range is too short. Plus, they're too expensive and they're no fun to drive. Well, is any of that actually true? Time to do some myth busting. Let's put these arguments to our experts who really know what they're talking about. Electric cars won't help the environment. They're just transferring the problem, which is replacing oil with dirty coal and dangerous nuclear power. I don't think that's the case. Electric cars are clean once we get to production onwards. So once the cars are made and they hit the streets, then they're not producing any more toxins, uh, which you can't be said for petrol and diesel cars. Unfortunately, creating cars will have a, an environmental footprint, but once they're produced with electric cars, that continues and the batteries are fully recyclable. Mining for battery materials is ruining the planet. It's dangerous and exploits child labor. Okay, so there's a lot of debates about mining in the midst of it. One of them is rare earth materials are used in batteries. That's total nonsense. It doesn't happen. In terms of some of the materials like cobalt, cobalt comes from recycling a lot of materials such as your mobile phone and your laptops. A lot of that generates and goes back into the batteries. We also have lithium. We have about two to 300 billion tons, which is about 19 trillion Nissan Leaf batteries of uh, material around the earth. Now, in terms of mining, yes, there were child labor issues. And companies are now moving away from that because you've got this whole forest of lithium around. So the technology is improving all the time. And as technology improves, we're making them safer, mass production produces better and more efficient processes. There are better alternatives. Petrol and diesel cars are more efficient than ever. How about LPG and CNG? And surely hydrogen is the way to go. I have this argument with people time and time again, uh, especially about hydrogen. There will be a place for hydrogen, and I think that's for commercial vehicles, but there is already an infrastructure for petrol or diesel. Um, we don't need to try and create an, another infrastructure for hydrogen. Electric makes common sense when there is electric on every street corner and a, a widely available and a renewable source. The electricity required to even produce hydrogen in the first place is very energy intensive, and you can power hundreds of vehicles off of it to create hundreds of uh, cars worth of hydrogen. So the whole point of burning things to propel ourselves doesn't work so regardless of if it's as clean as possible with cng or lpg it's still burning things and it's still harmful to the environment disposing of toxic ev batteries will be an ecological disaster so the first thing that we've got to consider and a lot of people come up about this and say oh it's disaster in disposing of batteries ev batteries are now 100 percent recyclable when they do get to their end of life you can recycle the whole element of it and feed it back into the system but the other part that is now developing is what they call a circular market. So you're now seeing old EV batteries that reach the end of their life. They can no longer power an EV vehicle. They still have plenty of capacity where they can use the storage devices. So you start to see them coming on homes and, and factories and businesses where you can use your solar power, feed into that battery, use it as a storage device, and then power your home or feed it back into the grid. There is a use for EV batteries. It's not going to be an ecological disaster as people are claiming. If we all switch to EVs, we'll overload the national grid. A lot of people say that, but there's two things you have to consider here. The first one is we don't all go to the fuel station at the same time now to refuel our cars because we all do different mileages. So why should it be any different for EVs? Well, are we going to all plug in at the same time? No. National grids say they've got more than enough capacity to cope. But the other key point to remember is that this switch to electric vehicles is a transition and not a cliff edge. So as we transit over to EVs, they're gradually coping the grid and scoping the grid to make sure that we can cope. But 45% of our energy is renewable. There's nowhere to charge an electric car. The public charging network is woeful. There are many charge po points in the UK, more than fuel stations. Most cars and phone apps for charging will tell you where they are and guide you to them. On today's news, the government has recognised this and announced a target of 300,000 foot by 2030 with reliability issues being resolved. Employers need to be incentivized to provide charging at work. They're useless for long distances. The electric range is too short. I am fortunate enough to have a Tesla and it has a maximum of 200 mile range, which is a couple of hours of driving. That's plenty enough for both my bladder and for not need to stop and needing to have a little bit of a, a rest or a walk around. Uh, I don't think anyone should be driving for three, four, five hundred miles without stopping anyway. So factoring 
in a stop to charge on your journey en route or on a public charging infrastructure is a must anyway. So nobody needs an electric car that does more than 300 miles. And we're sitting with modern chemistry, we're sitting in a, an area where two to 300 miles is available on quite a few models that are coming out. EVs are way too expensive. This is just adding to the class dividers. Poor people can't afford electric cars. EVs, the ticket price of an EV at the moment is agreeably expensive, but that is coming down all the time as they're getting towards mass adoption. The plan is that uh, they will be equal in price to ICE vehicles in about 2025. But you also have to offset with EVs the lower running costs, the path to tax benefits and the grants. Generally, an EV is about a third of the price of an ICE vehicle to run, depending on where you're charging and stuff. And also you've got to consider the future penalties with ICE vehicles. As ICE vehicles are winding down towards 2030, fuel prices are going to start going up. They're going to start taxing and everything. You're going to see environmental issues with people taxing and keep them out of cities. So you've got to balance both together, but EVs are always going to be better. EVs are no fun. There's no engine noise, no manual gearbox, no involvement. So this, I've, I've done motorsport, amateur motorsport for the last 20 odd years, and I've taken my Tesla Model 3 on a track day, and I can honestly say I have more fun in my Model 3 than I have in, in other petrol diesel cars that I've taken to, to tracks and events. And what did I love about it? So you've got really quick acceleration. I'm really not bothered about noise anymore. The, that pure adrenaline rush when you hit the throttle pedal and you just pick up the torque is everything's there coming out of corners um, and certainly on the track days that I done we were hassling BMW M3s they were holding us up and the the petrol heads in those really hated it so I, I'm well over that one myself and that one is definitely a myth electric cars don't have soul well to me no car has a soul that's for human beings People can be very frightened of change. We look back on this in 10 years and things will be a different attitude for most people. It certainly made me aware of more of the green issues, global warming, pollution, traffic congestion, and the future for our world. Find out more about electric cars, see them, try them for size, even take them for a test drive at the British Motor Show. We'll have experts on hand to help you through the minefield of car buying. They'll help you find your perfect next car and we'll be able to answer any questions that you might have. Join us 18 to 21st of August, 2022 at Farnborough.